Joo, no mulla on skubla olema aslah nelja saaslah nii organiseere ja mulla on Sami Räävi saadu elli. So, ma nem is Aslak Holmberken, I'm the president of the Sami Council. What are some of the most challenging or uh, significant things on your desk right now in Sami Council? What are the topical issues for 2020s? Well, uh, of course, uh, our work uh, is based around the idea of Sami as one nation in four countries. So that is something that has uh, dramatically changed in the past, uh, uh, yeah, past year or during this uh, this year 2022. So currently our collaboration with our members and friends in Russian side is uh, on hold. So that is of course uh, what is uh, coloring our work in a, in a dark shade at the moment. And of course we continue our work with the rights in, uh, in various uh, forums, uh, um, be that to ensure our traditional use of our territories and uh, and um, also rights related to knowledge. That's one one aspect of our work that we are uh, aiming to build more strongly is um, um, define more clearly our principles uh, towards um, research and co-production of knowledge uh, and uh, also what do we want from research, what kind of research uh, is uh, worth engaging with. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to chat to you about today, which is that uh, we know that for the Arctic region there is probably more research interest than ever before. There are things like climate change, shipping, tourism, infrastructure, <coughs> biodiversity changes. There's a world of scientists out there some of them want to do good, some of them are only starting their career. How does a good collaboration with Sami Council and Sami community look like if a researcher comes to you? What are some of the top, like, top three or essential points that you think forms a good relationship and uh, with science? Yeah, so we are actually just starting to form a more um, clear and official position on exactly these matters um, but uh, my initial thoughts are first of all we need to be part of the project from the start so we have to be part of defining the project and the research questions because that's the only way to ensure that it is really relevant for us and and that it's worth uh, putting our effort into and uh, also the participation has to happen on an equal footing so we're too used to being invited to be the indigenous uh, alibi for different projects so we want to get rid of that and be part of actually defining the project where our knowledge and priorities would be on an equal footing so it needs to have uh, uh, true respect to um, Sami indigenous uh, knowledge and uh, the third uh, point I would say is that uh, the participation also has to happen in a way that it's uh, fitting for for the lifestyles of the people who are participating like uh, if we're working with uh, traditional fishermen or reindeer herders then it has to be taken into account that uh, their life revolves around that practice and, and whatever research or knowledge production happens that's uh, something extra and it will have to take into account the, um, what's happening during the season when it's appropriate uh, time to participate in an interview and in what way well let's in conclusion think about some of the things that you were talking about in the arctic passion general assembly in denmark uh, you were talking about the Atlantic salmon and your home river, the Arni. So, how would you uh, assess when it's worthwhile to convey Sami knowledge? What would be the criteria of... Um, uh, we know that there's a lot of crises on the river, there's a lot of crises for the salmon out in the ocean. So, how do you personally assess that uh, now it is time to go and work with researchers and and how would it look like in the case, for example, regarding salmon? Interesting <coughs> principles. Yeah. 
Well, I think it's more or less what I um, said uh, on a general level regarding participation and uh, on an equal footing. So I think uh, we need to be part of uh, defining how do we do this research and what are the actual uh, key questions to put forward and, and how do we um, compile knowledge. So I think that's, uh, that's the starting point that to ensure that we or the participants feel it relevant and worthwhile to take part into that. And uh, so I think it's uh, necessary to ensure um, local uh, steering in a way that um, there has to be a it can be an ad hoc uh, SAMI uh, group that would uh, define what is the knowledge that uh, we want to share and also discuss within themselves what might be something we don't want to share. So it has to be constructed in a way that allows us to define how do we want to share our knowledge. Now, what would be the greetings or message <coughs> When there is a lot of scientists out there, they might never have heard of indigenous knowledge, but yet they have been given a task to explore climate change or something like that. Who has the responsibility, the indigenous organizations, to inform and uh, create mechanisms that scientists would know beforehand? Or is the, uh, in a way, responsibility with any researcher that comes into your area before they come? To learn about this as a part of their education for example or something i think it's uh, primarily um, the responsibility of the researcher to make themselves familiar with the sami and sami ways of knowing um, while that being said um, for example uh, some of our member organizations they have been offering these uh, courses uh, on um, let's say sami reindeer herding communities because um, it might be not so easy to find information on, on a specific uh, uh, community or what is relevant for a specific study. So also some member organizations are offering this kind of uh, courses, but I don't think that should be the norm to expect that uh, civil society organizations uh, can offer this kind of uh, um, education for researchers so it's uh, it's mainly up to them to make themselves ready for the research let's end with an open mic you have seen and traveled across the arctic and the world on indigenous issues and you are often at the un and many other processes what would you say to arctic passion and other scientists what is the most important thing for them to know to how, about the future uh, what would you call the scientific order of researchers? What is now the important thing to know right now in 2022? That's a very big, big question. Um, but um, what I would highlight is uh, that uh, when we're talking about knowledge and knowing and uh, we're facing a situation that uh, nobody knows what will be ahead of us. So I think uh, that also is a factor that draws us uh, to to a same line in a way that we're all looking into this uh, great unknown. So even bits and pieces that might seem irrelevant can be very valuable when when looking into the um, um, big changes that are happening around our our ecosystems and, and lives. So I think this um, certain uh, humbleness would be what I want to highlight that uh, we need to find ways to come come to the table and, and uh, admit that we don't know what's going to happen. So let's see what is the path forward. Mr. President, thank you for your time. Thank you. Kiitos.